The Waterfront Art Project was funded in July 2010 by artist and artistry lecturer Tony Wynn. Assisted by photographer Nick Hill, fine art student Bill Brown, technician Steve Wright and court artist Laura Flancy. The large industrial style space became available by kind consent of the owners. Neptune Developments. It opened officially on 15th August 2010 with an exhibition of classic film posters. Within four weeks the waterfront team had grown rapidly with artists, photographers and sculptors joining and forming the core team that still exists today. The project had, and still has, a simple ethos, to provide a fine art space open to all people, artists and creative individuals and to all sectors of the public. Visitors are always warmly welcomed and the team feel that warm welcome has worked. Nearly 40,000 people have visited the project since August 2010. Many of those had never entered a fine art space before. In 2012 the waterfront intends to build on its success and continue in its mission to promote and support artists and to drive forward Southport's potential as a, as a center for artistic and cultural excellence. artist so I like it to have many layers of meaning um, it takes a bit of lateral thinking to understand some of my pieces of work so alongside them I usually have um, a selection of quotes that underpin the work and try to explain what, um, the meaning I'm, I'm trying to put across Everything I've made is comes from inside it, a very strong feeling that I need to make that piece of work. And that's what that's my motivation. I have to be infected by the subject. say that the, uh, the ones in the Spice of Life are based on a kind of neo-psychedelia and uh, with probably some elements of, of surrealism, but not, not, not in the traditional sense of the word. Okay. How you produce the painting? It involves a very large straw, a two-foot straw, which has sucked the paint up and then uh, blew it back out onto the canvas. And what, what does the painting tell, tell us? The painting is to do with the, the way food reacts with the body and what benefits and what benefits we get from it. Yeah, it's based 
basically from a nature program, so it was the migration patterns of the giant spider crop, and each year they go to the same spot in South Australia and shed the shells because it builds up and builds up, and uh, they have to escape them, um, otherwise they'll be entombed. And it's kind of just like a graveyard, but with no death. But I kind of like the idea of uh, thinking about how advertising bombards constantly and the power of the high street store through advertising and then eventually the litter that was left behind from it and that was kind of what I was going with this the installation and then the, uh, the animation as well Basically, um, things come into my mind about the sort of poverty or depression and um, what you read in the papers about the, the wars and other sort of things. Um, I'm always seem to be on the lookout for some unknown reason for this sort of rather depressing themes, which um, I don't know whether this is due to the fact that my husband's disabled and he's getting more and more sort of fragile as the years go on. And whether this is reflected in my work, I'm not sure about that one. But I seem to, all my work seems to be based on some form of figures that are under some sort of stress or depression or lack of food. Maybe tell us a little bit about the, the, the work, the method. Method. You use, yeah. Right. Um, it's quite a, a complicated method, but I, I mean, I've done so much now that it comes to me quite easily. Basically, it's any used um, cotton cloth that's quite soft, and this is dipped into um, PVA glue, and then into plaster, and then you land it in a big, soggy mess of cloth, which is then put onto either a canvas or a board, lay it on the floor, and manoeuvre it until you're happy with the shapes. The only problem with it really is the fact that I can't see it up until it dries. So I'm never very sure what I'm going to end up with, which is often a surprise. Thank you very much. My subject is photography. Um, Basically, the stuff I actually like to look at myself, something interesting, nature, um, pictures, aspects of anything that I like to look at and I think other people would like to look at. That is what I try and do. Tell us why you like this. This is my blood. This is my blood. Painting is in my blood. I do it um, like I breathe. It's a passion. It becomes a drug. <laughs> I've painted for 40 years or over. My paintings are of various uh, moments in my life. Musicians, artists, um, dancers, people and places. I've travelled a lot. Autoscapes and town and urban scapes. But I also create abstract work. Now, the abstract, abstract work that I create is exactly the same subject matter, just represented in a more contemporary form. Journey rather than the ultimate destination that I'm interested in. 